Well, hello there! Welcome back to Conversations with Carrie. I know, I know it has been way too long, and you know what? <laughs> 2020 has been taking me through it. I'm sure all y'all can probably attest that this has been a really difficult year. And um, some things changed for me recently, and I was just like, Lord, you, I, I've been like dipping and diving all up and through my word, okay? Because I'm like, Lord, you've got to help me out here. And I feel like the Lord gave me a word that I want to share with you because it was encouraging to me. So I want to encourage it, to, uh, encourage you with the same word. So first, let me check in though. How have you been doing? I'm telling you, last two weeks have sucked a little bit for me, but that's okay. God is in control. I am not. And that's actually what I kind of want to talk to you about today. Um, as we all know, 2020 has not gone in any way, shape, or form how we thought it would. I mean, expectations, plans, everything to me has just been thrown to the side. And I realized that I've been struggling with that because I've had to relinquish complete control. You know, when things are going and you ha kind of have an idea of what tomorrow will look like, you tend to rely on that. And the Lord's been really teaching me like, no, you got to rely on me in every step of the way. And so, of course, I went to my word and I was like, okay. I need something because your girl is on the struggle bus. I mean, I'm talking front seat without a seat belt. Um, and the Lord took me to the story of Bathsheba, David, Bathsheba, and Uriah. So 2 Samuel 11. And as I was reading this, you know, I think everybody has heard the story of, uh, you know, David slept with Bathsheba, had no business sleeping with Bathsheba, and then, you know, all the stuff that he did. But nobody really talks about the point of view of Bathsheba. And that's what I'm coming to talk to you today. I was looking at the story of Bathsheba and you know what? She really had her own 2020 year. I mean, when you think about everything that transpired over just chapter 11, it's like, golly, like, <laughs> you know, you hear about David and how he fasted and did all this other stuff. But I'm like, when you really dive into it, and that's what we're going to do, dive into like what life must have been like for Bathsheba. So, okay. Let's start in first. Let's actually start with verse four. I call this the booty call for it, <laughs> verse. And y'all have to know that me and Jesus, we talk very real. And like, sometimes I got to put it in like my terms so I understand it. So please don't take this like, no, verse four does not say it was a booty call. David was out of position. David should have been somewhere fighting with his troops, but instead he was out taking a stroll. And that's when he sees Bathsheba looking all fine and stuff, taking a bath. She was out, out taking a bath, minding her own business. And here come David, and he's like, oh, peep her. She got it going on. Let me go on and, you know, invite her over to the and over to the palace. So she goes to the palace, and she sleeps with him. And that's why I called this verse the booty call verse, because he was like, oh, you're that one right there? I want that. Go ahead and get that, and I'm going to sleep with her. Now, I was having a conversation with someone about, like, did he force her, or, you know, was this consensual? And I do believe it was consensual, because... Just like we know, she could have said, no, I'm not going to sleep with you, David, and dealt with whatever the consequences was. And I know you're probably thinking, like, who's turning the king down? Would the king want something? And everybody knows that David was fine. You know, he, they, he was determined as fine when he got anointed. So who's going to be like, oh, I'm going to turn down this fine man? But we know that Joseph turned down Potiphar's wife. I mean, he got sent to prison either way. Um, but, you know, she could have said no, and she didn't. So... I'm just saying, y'all, she was at fault as well. But either way goes, she sleeps with him. And then she gets into what we call a dang homie situation. Listen, <laughs> homegirl ends up being pregnant. And she's like, uh, I'm sure she was probably at home like, wait, what? I, now I'm having the king's baby? Because remember, her husband, Uriah, is out fighting for the king where he should have been out there too. But anyway, so she sends word to David and says, I'm with child. And then verses five to six, David immediately started talking to Joab. Like David immediately started planning on how to make this right or how to, how to fix it so that he doesn't look guilty or he's not, he, not look, he isn't the one that is guilty and then that she isn't put to death because a woman who has, uh, for one, has sex outside of her marriage and gets pregnant, that's back then, straight up killing you. That's all there is to it. So... I imagine, this is when I started to really think about Bathsheba's state of mind. 
First of all, I go sleep with this king. He fine and all, but I had no business sleeping with him, but I slept with him. And then I tell him that I'm with child. And the first thing he does is go figure out like how to fix it. But n the Bible doesn't say, and then he sent a letter to Bathsheba to see how she was doing, to check in and to tell her that she's going to make everything, tell her that he's going to make everything great. No, he actually went into fixing and we actually don't hear Bathsheba mentioned until 19 verses later. And if you are up on reading your Bible, 19 verses, listen, that could be months, <laughs> which I do believe it was that long. Like 19 verses ain't no joke when it comes to biblical time. Okay. This whole time, like over these 19 verses, which we don't know. I, I imagine that she was at home like, oh Lord, I am pregnant. Like, what am I going to do? She's probably in despair. She's probably feeling guilt. She's probably feeling shame. And then the process of this she finds out that her husband is brought in town because, of course, David was like, let me bring him back. Um, you know, every soldier coming back from war is going to go sleep with his wife, seek the comforts of his own wife. He tells him, go, you know, wash your feet, which is basically like, OK, go get cleaned up and go lay with your wife. And Uriah's like, no, I'm going to lay at the king's gate because that's where my duty is. And that's where I should be right now. And I know Bessie was like, so, so wait, <laughs> wait a minute. My husband's in town and he has decided not to come into this house. And she was probably worried at the same time. She was like, is he going to know that I've been with another man? Like, all these things were probably running through her head. And she's like, and I still haven't heard back from the king. Is, is King David going to, like, do right by me? How am I going to get out of this situation? Like, I imagine she had probably such distress, probably such turmoil, guilt, sadness, um, rejection, Fear, like all these things were probably cycling through her mind. And I don't know about you, but a lot of a lot of those feelings have also cycled through my mind in 2020. I'm like, Lord, what are you doing? Like, I, it's, it's sometimes you feel so just like overrun. And it's like, what am I supposed to do with this situation? How am I supposed to handle this? But listen, God always has a plan. So let's keep going. Now, Bathsheba just found out her husband, I mean, just found out she's pregnant. Um, her husband was in town, didn't see her. She hasn't heard from the man who got her pregnant. And now she finds out that her husband has been killed in battle. Okay, this was probably, we look at it for our times. This was maybe uh, when we found out that the shelter in place was going to be extended in April. This is probably how she felt. She was probably just like, oh my gosh. Like, probably so run down, so just defeated. And sometimes, isn't it? We just feel defeated. We just feel like, Lord, what are you doing during this season? What am I supposed to learn from this? How am I supposed to grow from this? I imagine that's how she felt. And then after her mourning period, which they say the mourning period was probably like seven days, David sends for her and brings her into the house and marries her. So yes, it's great that he's like, okay, I'm gonna do right by you. Come on into the house. But it's not like he's marrying her, marrying her out of love. He's marrying her out of duty and responsibility. And also after he just went and killed her husband. So I slept with your wife, killed, your, uh, killed the husband, and then now I'm gonna marry your wife. This ain't right in no kind of way. So this is the part where I call this the shotgun marriage because <laughs> yes, David was like, okay, I'm going to do right by you. I'm going to marry you. But that's after she's already pregnant and uh, she really has no other choice. It's like, you did just kill my husband, King David. So yeah, now you're going to marry me, but there's no love there. And it's just out of duty. And it's because I have, I'm basically, I'm with child like yeah you better marry me but who wants to feel that way i'm sure she started there was probably some resentment she probably felt betrayed like all these emotions that she felt and that it's funny because i'm like the bible doesn't talk about talk about this but if you look at this from a human standpoint at any time or place you know that she had to be in the state of constant turmoil and for some of you you have felt that same way this year but you know what that's not where the story ends god is so good and he still redeems us so this is where I get into the reap what you sow uh, section. So Bathsheba's uh, son dies. David's around here fasting and he's like, oh my gosh, I can't, you know, like, Lord, please try to make this right. You know, this is after Nathan the prophet has basically told him, like, you know, you was wrong for doing that. Um, and he asked for forgiveness, but either way it goes, you know, you reap what you sow. What you do makes a difference. And I think we have to realize that what you do also impacts more than just you. Like David's decision impacted Bathsheba. Like, she was a mother, and I, I assume this was her first child. I, I'm, I'm going to assume that was the case. Um, because, but Lord, the Bible doesn't say either way it goes. But this was, this was a mother who lost her child. And 
that's I'm sure it's gut wrenching. I'm not a mother yet, so I don't know exactly what that's like. But I can only imagine even losing the loved one. Like she lost her child in this, and they talk about everything that David did afterwards. But I was just thinking, gosh. So wait a minute. So far, her year is going towards. She has sex with the king, which I don't know if she thought that was a good thing or a bad thing. She gets pregnant by him. Her husband comes home and is not paying any attention to her and doesn't even come to the house. And then her husband dies. And then after she, after her husband dies, she's called into a, a, a marriage or a, a union because it's like, I'm with your child. So you got to marry me so that the, you know, the people don't kill me. Talk about a horrible year. But that is not where God ends. I believe that he always gives us beauty for ashes. His word talks about if you seek him and he'll redeem you. And I, I don't ever believe that he puts us in a situation where we can't get out of it. And we know that God's word says that all things work together. So um, either way it goes, but God used this to her benefit. And she didn't stay just this, you know, this distraught woman. He actually allowed David to comfort her again. And this is where we see like a more human side that David went into her and David comforted her and laid with her again. And that's when she was pregnant with Solomon. And as we know, Solomon, um, King Solomon was one of the wisest kings of the Bible. And not only did her story stop there, but the wisdom that she gave Solomon, he actually wrote about it. And that's what they say uh, Proverbs 31 is based on. So not only, her, even though her situation started out horrible, I mean, her year was sucking, but God turned it around. And now her words are actually uh, giving women life, even though this year is difficult. And I know if, if it's anything like mine, you're facing some really challenging situations, but that is not where our story ends. And I believe that God has so much more for us. And our year doesn't have to be the year of Bathsheba. Um, 2020 doesn't have to be the worst year ever. There are beauty that can, there is beauty that can come out of these ashes. So as you're thinking about like, how can, it, how can I do better? How can I make this a better year? I will say first, get in your word. This Bible is just full of such goodness. Like I just gave y'all a straight up story on like betrayal, adultery, uh, war, murder, like it has everything, but it also has hope. It has love. It has faith. It has belief. So get in your word, get before the Lord. Um, I will also say fast and pray. Do not underestimate. As my daddy says, sometimes you got to push back that plate. Sometimes you have to die to self. You have to die to your flesh so the Lord can, you can see what the Lord has for you and what he wants to say to you. Make sure you can hear his word, hear his direction, hear his correction. So I believe that fasting and praying, it, it changes the the atmosphere just like as you go into worship and you tell the Lord I just love you and I bless you and I praise your holy name but also I want to encourage you to have an expectant spirit um, God wants to bless his children he is not some you know being that's like out there who doesn't care about what we're doing or what our lives no he cares about every hair on our head he cares he's listening and he's taking action i believe he is acting on our behalf just like his word says so have an expectant spirit it's not going to stay like this this is not going to be forever i believe that the lord is changing some hearts he's changing situations and that there are going to be amazing things that come out of this year i know you may not see it i know you may not feel like well i don't have the job carry right now or I don't have um, my husband left me or you know what that relationship I thought was going to work is not working. Whatever it might be, God is good. He is a good, good father. That is one thing that will never change. His character is true and his word says he who promised is faithful. I also wrote about this um, on my blog, CarrieLee.com. You hear me talk about it all the time. So go over there and take a look. But also if you're like, you know what, Carrie, I'm just a YouTube person. That's fine. Make sure you like and subscribe. And also drop me a comment down below. Let me know how your 2020 is going. Be blessed.